In this demo, we will be measuring a 5-step fiberglass test block. The thickness of the steps are 3.01 inches, or 78 millimeters, 3.50 inches, or 89 millimeters, 3.937 inches, or 100 millimeters, 4.331 inches, or 110 millimeters, and 4.685 inches, or 119 millimeters. We will be using an Olympus 38DL Plus thickness gauge. The exact key presses would be different if you were using a different model Olympus thickness gauge, but the overall process would be the same. In order to penetrate this thick of fiberglass, we will need to use a half megahertz M2008 high penetration transducer. Since the frequency of this transducer is lower than 2.25 megahertz, it is considered high penetration, and therefore the 38DLP-HP software option would be required. The first step would be to connect the transducer and plug the transducer cable into the TR1 at the top of the instrument. Then turn the instrument on. Once the instrument is on, press the XDCR recall key. Since the high penetration software option is activated on this unit and we are using a high penetration transducer, we can press the down arrow to highlight default HP single element and then press the enter key. Here you will see the list of default HP single element transducer setups. Press the down arrow to highlight DEFP1-0.5-M2008. dash dash At this point, you can press the red measure key to recall the setup or press the enter key to see the parameters within the setup. If you press enter, press the red measure key next in order to recall the setup and return to the measurement screen. Next, because this transducer utilizes a delay line but is used in mode 1, it is required that you perform a do zero. To do this, wipe any couplant off the face of the transducer, then press and release the second F key first, then press the yellow Cal zero key. This allows the gauge to compensate for the time through the delay line. The default setup we recalled has a default sound velocity for fiberglass, since this transducer is most commonly used to measure thick composites. Therefore, we do not need to change the default sound velocity. We will, however, need to change our range. Currently, the range is set to half an inch. If you are using metric units, it will be set to 10 millimeters. Given the thickness of our sample, we will not be able to see the back wall echoes on screen since the range is currently set too low. To change the range, keep pressing the blue range key until the bottom right side of the screen displays 10.00. If you are using metric units, it will be set to 200.0. We set our range based on our thickest step, which is 4.685 inches or 119 millimeters. If we set our range so we can see the back wall echo from the thickest step, then the back wall echoes from the thinner steps will appear sooner in time and be displayed on screen. We can now apply coupling to the part and couple the transducer onto the sample. We will start by coupling onto the thickest step. We do not get a reading, but we do observe a weak signal in the area we would expect the signal to appear based on the range and the thickness being measured. Since the signal is too low in amplitude to be measured, we need to increase the gain. To do this, press the Wave Adjust key. This will bring up the setup parameters at the bottom of the screen. Press the down arrow to the gain settings. Once you get to max gain, you will see the yellow gain line, which identifies which of the three gain settings need adjustment. Since the back wall echo is under the max gain portion of the gain line, we need to increase the max gain. Use the right arrow to increase the max gain. Increasing the max gain will also adjust the TDG slope. Eventually, the back wall echo is no longer under the max gain line and is now under the TDG slope line. Therefore, we need to increase the TDG slope. To do this, press the down arrow to TDG slope, then press the right arrow to increase the TDG slope. You may need to go back and forth and adjust both the TDG slope and the max gain until the back wall echo is detected. Now we are getting a reading. Before we calibrate, we want to make sure the other steps on the test block are able to be measured. Couple onto each step of the test block to make sure you are able to get a reading. When we get to the thinnest step, the back wall echo is not being detected. Since this echo appears sooner in time, use the arrow keys and go to INIT Gain, 
Then use the right arrow to slightly increase it until the back wall signal from the thinnest step is detected. After making this adjustment, it is a good idea to check the other steps again to make sure they are still able to make detection of the back wall signals. Since no further adjustments are needed, we can go ahead and calibrate. For best accuracy, calibrate using two samples of the same material with known thicknesses representing the minimum and maximum thickness. We will perform a velocity calibration using our thickest fiberglass step and a zero calibration using our thinnest fiberglass step. To do this, we will first press the yellow CalVel key and then couple onto the thickest step. Once you have a steady reading, press the Enter key. Then use the arrow keys to change the value to 4.685 inches or 119 millimeters. Then press the yellow Cal Zero key and then couple onto the thinnest step. Once you have a steady reading, press the Enter key. Then use the arrow keys to change the value to 3.071 inches or 78 millimeters, then press the red measure key. You can now check the other steps on the block to make sure the measurements are linear.